Covering every aspect of animation, this course is a visual history encompassing a vast range of animation and animators from all over the world. We will begin with the origins of animation and early animation devices, then continue with the first animated cartoons. From there, we will address animation in every period well into present day, touching on a range of styles, techniques, innovations, and historical moments, from the invention of the multiplane camera to the rise of CGI animation and everything in between. We will discover who is called the father of American animation and who made the first fully animated film using hand drawn animation. We will find out about the most influential person in animation, Walt Disney, who revolutionized cartoons with sound and color. Discover how Fleischer Studios and Warner Bros. rivaled the Disney Studios. Who was the first animated movie star? Plus, look at other icons of animation and the new age of TV animation. And finally, the computer animation revolution. We will also travel abroad to Western Europe, which led the way in the early days of animation. In particular, France, with Emile Cole's first fully animated film, Phantasmagerie. To Japan, where Studio Ghibli conquered the world with anime. And even to Argentina, which beat out Snow White for the first feature length animated film. The films included in this course were chosen based on, first of all, their lasting creative merits, then the influence of a film, meaning its effect on future animated films, as well as the critical acclaim and the public success. Although this course covers the world history of animation, it is obvious that the American animation has always been the driving force of the animation industry. Since the history of animation is mainly the history of American animation, this course is concerned with the influence on American animation. Therefore, foreign animated films have also been included, based on their overall effect on the American animation or how later films were made. The main criteria for including any animation in this course were unique artistic achievement later copied by others, technical advances, commercial success, cultural and historical importance, the setting or altering of trends, as well as anything interesting that helps to tell the inspirational story of the history of animation. Let us start this exciting journey through the history of the most versatile of art forms, animation art. So let's begin. Admit it or not, but everybody enjoys animated movies, regardless of age. Do you know what animation actually is? Well, simply put, animation means to bring something to life. More specifically, animation is the creation of the illusion of movement by playing a series of individual images in a rapid sequence. It is just a definition of a word, but to explain it further, we need to dive into the subject even more. The animation technique is based on fooling the eye. Did you know that our eyes can retain an image for 1 16th of a second? So when multiple images appear in fast succession, our brain perceives it as a moving picture. This is called the persistence of vision. When the picture appears faster than 16 per second, they begin to merge into each other, creating the illusion of movement. When the images are strung together and projected at a speed of at least 16 frames per second, the illusion of continuous movement is created. Television and movies are usually created at 24 to 30 images per second. That is how animation works. How these images are brought to life is a different matter. Animation can be made using just about anything. Drawing, painting, sand, puppets, chalkboards, bugs, or computers. Let us start our journey through the history of animation. It's difficult to pinpoint a single person as the inventor of animation. Instead, it was a long, long process that evolved over centuries. In fact, the animation really started with cavemen. That's right, cave paintings from as early as 18,000 BCE are the earliest examples of artists attempting to show their drawings in movement. Historians believe that these images of animals with multiple sets of legs were made to look like they were moving by the shadows cast on them from the fires. Archaeological findings prove that people have been attempting to depict things in motion for as long as they've been able to draw. Some notable examples from ancient times include 
7,000 BCE in China, shadows of puppets are projected onto parchment paper. This is developed into an art form in Eastern countries, particularly India. 3,000 BCE. Shari Sukta, a Bronze Age pottery bowl, depicts goats leaping. These sequential images of a goat could have possibly been designed to be spun. That would make goats jump, just like the picture you can see on the slide. 2000 BC, Greeks drew figures on vases in various stages of movement. An example from the European Renaissance includes 1500 CE, Vitruvian Man. Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man drawing shows multiple angles amplifying movement. Animation before film, 1600 to 1877. With the spread of the Industrial Revolution in Europe and North America in the 18th and 19th centuries came experimentation with machines that would make images appear to move. Let's look at what they were and how they worked. Early animation devices. The animation was born about 200 years ago out of a few small devices meant to create the illusion of life. These devices produced the very first moving pictures. The science behind how these images come to life in these early devices still forms today's rules of how to create animation. Interestingly, the first live-action movie projectors also came from these devices. Throughout history, there have been numerous devices and toys capable of depicting active scenes of animated cartoon characters and objects. Let's take a look at some of them. The Magic Lantern The Magic Lantern was invented in the 1600s, probably by Christian Huygens, a Dutch scientist. It is an image projector using pictures on slides of glass. This device used a mirror in the back of a light source, originally a candle, that would direct the light through long glass slides, projecting the slide's pictures. Since some sheets contained moving parts, it is considered the earliest known example of projected animation. The 19th century was the century of science. Scientists studied the persistence of images on the retina. In 1824, Peter Marc Roget published The Persistence of Vision with Regard to Moving Objects. As Roget explained, the eye's retina retains an image briefly after it has disappeared, which means that if images are changed in rapid succession, the viewer had the impression of movement. This phenomenon led to further exploration and the invention of many optical toys and devices. Although the theory of persistence of vision as the main reason we see the film as motion has been disproved since 1912, film historians continue mentioning the theory with many historical references. The following developments are relevant to that story. In 1825, a famous English physician, John A. Paris, created the thaumatrup. Thaumatrup means magic turn. It is a small disc with different pictures on each side that is attached to two pieces of string. When rotated, the pictures appear to combine into a single image. The thaumatrup was made to test the persistence of vision, an optical illusion that tricks the eye into seeing movement long after the movement has stopped. If you are interested in how it works, you can even make one yourself. Then a kistoscope. In 1831, the Belgian scientist Joseph Plateau invented the penikistoscope. Penikistoscope is also known as the phantoscope and sometimes spelled P-H-E-N-A-K-I-S-T-I-S-C-O-P-E. It featured a spinning disc with a series of images and when placed in front of a mirror, it seemed like the pictures were moving. The penikistoscope can be viewed by only one person at a time. You spin the disc and watch through the openings and watch the frame-by-frame -frame animation. The penikistoscope was only famous for two years due to the constantly growing technology. Interesting fact, this device is currently used as the logo for the Ottawa International Animation Festival, symbolizing one of the earliest forms of animation. The concept was suggested by mathematician William George Horner. This is very similar to the phenikiskoscope, 
But the zoetrope, instead of a spinning disc, has the cylinder. The zoetrope was an open cylinder that housed inside the frame-by-frame -frame drawing on the long interchangeable strips that spun and made the images appear to move. The cylinder contained several vertical slits, which provided a mechanism for the eye to keep the spinning images from blurring together while in motion. The zoetrope can be viewed by multiple viewers at a time. Fun fact, the original name for the device was a de Dalum, which means the wheel of the devil. Later in the 1860s, it was renamed more positively the zoetrope, which means wheel of life. Zoetrope was not popular until the 1860s, maybe because of the name. Flipbook John Barnes Lynette patented the first flipbook in 1868 as the kineograph, Latin for moving picture. A flipbook is made by layering sheets of paper each having a slightly altered drawing or pictures. When the pages are flipped rapidly, the pictures appear to move. A flipbook also relies on the persistence of vision. It reached a wide audience and is credited with inspiring early animators more than the devices developed in this era. Flipbooks remain one of the most popular and accessible forms of animation today, and you can surely make one yourself. Praxinoscope slash Moviola 1877 The Praxinoscope was created in France by Charles Emile Raynaud. The praxinoscope is similar to the zoetrope. It has the same cylinder shape, but instead of slits on the outside, it has mirrors on the inside. When spun, it reflects the pictures and makes them appear to move. These mirrors help provide a clearer and more vivid animation than looking at the moving illustrations through slits. The images for the machine were hand-painted by Raynaud onto a ribbon. To break it down, it was a much better version of the zoetrope. It is considered to have shown the first prototypes of the animated cartoon. Raynaud developed his praxinoscope into an early kind of film projector and projected the first animation in public. He called it the Theatre Optique, optical theater. It was a popular attraction in Paris until 1900 when the Lumiere brothers introduced their early cinema screenings. The audience began to wane, but Raynaud did not want to make films like Lumiere and continued the manual work. Because of this, he was left behind the times. With cinema opening its door to the people, the praxinoscope became a toy without a future. Raynaud was no longer able to support himself. In a fit of rage, he smashed all of his three machines. Then, day after day, he threw his painstakingly painted films into the River Sin. He died in poverty and solitude a few years later. Two films by Charles Emile Raynaud remain, Pave Pierrot and Around a Bathing Hut. True little comedies performed by drawn actors. The movement is impressive, even for the modern-day viewer. Indeed, the animation is not the art of drawing that moves, but the art of movement which is drawn, as Norman McLaren remarked 50 years later. Raynaud's drawing becomes beautiful when it moves. Toward the end of the century, Edison in America and the Lumiere brothers in France created what is known today as cinema. The invention of photography and moving pictures aided in the development of animation. We'll talk shortly about some of the most important inventions and developments of that time. The kinetoscope invented by Thomas Edison was an early motion picture device. Using the celluloid film, it could project a 50-foot length of film in approximately 13 seconds. A celluloid film, which could hold images, was invented in 1887 by H.W. Goodwin. However, it was not a projecting device. It was a box into which a viewer would look through a viewfinder. Inside were strips of film flashing behind a shutter, thus freezing each separate image as it passed. The kinetoscope was designed for films to be viewed by one individual at a time. In 1894, Edison gave the first commercial motion picture screening in New York. On the video, you can see the virtual recreation of Edison's kinetoscope, the first individual viewer filmed marketed in 1894. Cinematograph, or kinematograph, is an early term for several types of motion picture film mechanisms. The name was used for movie cameras as well as film projectors. Louis Lumiere and his brother, August, worked together to create a motion picture camera superior to Thomas Edison's kinetoscope, which did not have a projector. You can see the device in the picture. 
The cinematograph weighed only 16 pounds, 7.3 kilograms, and was manually operated. But most importantly, while only one person at a time could use Edison's kinetoscope for viewing, the cinematograph could project an image onto a screen so a large audience of people could view images together. The Lumiere brothers held their first private screening on the 28th of December, 1895 in Paris of 10 short films. This day has traditionally been regarded as the birth of cinema. On the slide, you can see the virtual recreation of how the cinematograph run, invented by the Lumiere brothers in 1895. The American Alfred Clark in 1895 discovered the trick of the stop frame film while working for Edison on the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. At the crucial moment of the execution, Clark stopped the camera, substituted a puppet for the actress who was going to be beheaded, and started the camera again. Frame by frame or stop motion animation is the process of using models, which are moved and filmed frame by frame. This is perhaps the oldest kind of animation and was widely used in the past and is still popular today thanks to animators such as Tim Burton and Nick Park. A French magician and owner of the theater in Paris, George Melias, was the creator of special effects films and also animated letters of the alphabet for advertising films. Melias was the first to make objects move. He also accidentally discovered a technique of stop motion films, which is the trick of stopping the film and moving objects before continuing to shoot, when his camera jammed and then restarted. His most famous film was in 1902, Le Voyage dans la Lune, A Trip to the Moon, which has the scene in which a rocket crashes into the moon's eye. This image would go on to become one of the most iconic images in cinematic history. Although he made hundreds of films, he was left behind by the bigger film companies, and like fellow Raynaud before him, he started to destroy his films. Only during the last part of his life, he was rediscovered by the French surrealist movement and received the recognition he deserved as one of the pioneers of cinema. With all the development of film and animation at the turn of the century, it is difficult to pinpoint the first real animation or animator. But it was Englishman Arthur Melbourne Cooper who created what many consider to be perhaps the first true filmed animation, Matches and Appeal, in 1899. The film, shot frame by frame, featured small characters made of matches as they wrote on the blackboard. The same year, 1899, another groundbreaking development was made. Sound was captured. Using a magnetic recording device, the sound was recorded for the first time. With the beginning of the new century, the history of animation really became distinguishable from the history of cinema. And we are going to dive right into it next.